Okay. You were born in 1917? 1914. 1914. Okay. Yes. Well, let's change that. Let's get myself a notepad. So, we... Where were you born? Uh, <coughs> I called in Arizona. Okay. Two miles, uh, four miles. About seven miles uh, east, east of White Cone. Just across the Alphabet Reservation, just across the line. What is your name? I'm getting this for record purposes. Well, what are your names? My <laughs> name, uh, my first name. What they call me? Keep by, and then they call sheep by, and uh, then my name is Bertie K. Also, I changed my name as uh, another Bertie K. for a long time. Okay. When did you take on the name Harrison Begay? Since 19, uh, I don't remember, by 19, when I entered school, I had the name since 1939. Okay. I, I got my name in 1939 when I went to school. No, wait a minute. Well, now you went. No, no, 19. No, it's not 1939. 19. You went to the uh, Indian uh, school in 39 or? No, no, no. Oh, you graduated I, I, I from graduated, there. Yeah. I think it was 1932, I, I think. Okay. I went to grade school. Now, was Andy Sinegeni at the Santa Fe Indian School when you were there? Yes, yeah, she was there. Who were some of the others that were there? Uh, the artist, mm -hmm. Quincy Tahoma. Quincy Tahoma. Yeah. The other, Fred Cabote, he was in school, but he was working over there. Okay, okay. Yeah. okay. okay. Fred Cabote. Yeah, he was in the school, but he was on staff he, there. Yeah, he was at the museum. Okay. He was uh, working for the Sensei Museum. Now, this was under Dorothy Dunn's. Uh, was Alan Hauser there at that time? Yes, he was there. Okay. He didn't, he and I talked before he died. We did this too. Uh, no, we didn't. We did not get him on tape. I got him on an audio tape. Anyway, he uh, indicated that he, he uh, kind of didn't get along with Dorothy Dunn because he wanted to do three-dimensional things and and uh, and that wasn't typical of what was being done then. Right. All right. Well, who was Pop Shalee there? Yes, she was uh, there, but not later on, you know. But, uh -huh. uh, she must have been a character. I, well, I did talk to her. She was a character. <laughs> uh, <laughs> who were some of the others you remember? Well, uh, uh -huh. Francisco Beta. I was hoping to get to interview him, and of course he died, uh, so that was... There are some, there's one good artist on a catchy, but he died too. I think it was Sente, I forgot his last name. The Sente. Oh, something like that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you can read out that you read that. Okay. I know. Uh, well, there's some Oklahoma. Woody Crumbo, did he go? No, 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 no. Was your Okay, I didn't remember that, but I thought maybe I should ask. It's when uh, I forgot that niggas came from Oklahoma. But they were late, later in about 19, uh, 1939. As I graduated, I left. Okay, let's, let's go back and, and uh, tell me, was it, why did you go to the Santa Fe Indian School? Oh. I was, uh, well, I was going, uh, was thinking of going to Seminole Institute, but, or oh, I'll quit in school mm -hmm. when I, I came back to school. But uh, they had too many, the small room over there, Seminole Institute and Albuquerque. So, uh, they told me there's only three you can go to Seminole Institute. How old were you? 
twenties or younger? Yeah, about twenty. Okay. So were you glad to be getting off the res and going into the big city or <laughs> <laughs> was it Well I yeah, I started seventh grade or something. Well, so I got there only because I I went I uh, studied uh, at home, you know. I studied something to I I got twelfth grade in no time. Good, good. Was Valina Sheehy Herrera there at the time you Valina No I don't think so no. Okay. Then you very up a month. Pickerees. Yes, he yes. started out at Zia. Well, Zia. Was it Zia? And then his wife was from Pickerees. Oh, yes. Yeah, As I recall the story, he was oh, the yeah, one yeah. that got in got in trouble with the with the Pueblo for using the Zia symbol. Mm -hmm. And so they kicked him off and he went to Pickerees then. Mm -hmm. um, well, tell us about what it was like to be at the Santa Fe Indian School then. Well, that's, that's all right. I had a good time. I was <coughs> yeah, met a lot of friends, and I like it. But it was yeah. kind of it was kind of military, wasn't it? Like, I mean, you were told what to do and when uh, to do it. No, not 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 too long. Just for a while. Huh? Just for a while. Huh? Mm -hmm. Well, okay. like, uh, oh, yeah. There's one man who came over. He was, uh, well, he changed it. He changed so Man, what a pretty nice. Uh, I, don't know, I forgot his name. Mr. Tommy, he was born at Riley. And he, uh, he made us pretty good. He uh, made us clean up. And he made us all dress up. We had a, we had a wear a suit all the time. <laughs> 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 well, now, my uh, my husband was in the seminary, and he said he only had one cassock, so he had the food all down the front. Did you have more than one suit to wear? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, more than one suit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my husband always hated it because his best friend had more than one cassock. Mm -hmm. He had two or three, yeah. but he only had one, so he got food mm -hmm. all over the front and had to live with it that way. Yeah, yeah we did. We were uh, so the coach we went from the coach was so Indian, so did you play ball? And, uh, no, I I, mean, I was a little over age so I wasn't Okay. Older. You were older. They were, yeah. They were afraid you'd young. hurt those other boys? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> only for the young because they they uh, they play you you have to be under twenty one, I guess. Twenty or twenty or eighteen from uh we had a good a good basketball team. We had uh a lot of these boys from Sewing and a lot of boys from South Dakota. Oh, wow. The Dakotas. And some uh, Indians from Washington. They were a pretty good track. We had a good track. Yeah. Oh. But you were too <laughs> old. Yeah, I was too old. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you, when did you turn to art? Were you already doing art when you got to the Santa Fe Indian School? Yeah. Or did you start doing it then? I started doing it before. Before? Yes, sir. <laughs> Where were you? And who? No, who had, no, oh, no. At home. Okay. How many brothers and sisters did you have? Well, I had uh, um, about five or so. About half, uh, but they all gone except that time, uh, <laughs> Houston were living, but my brother and Two brothers and one sister and one kid. Four of us were living that time. Who were your parents? What were their names? Well, my father's name is Hus King Cloud the Gay, that's what they call him. Hus King Cloud the Gay. Yes, sir. That's a pretty strong name there. Well, yes, I guess. Pretty strong person. This one uh, famous uh, man about in China, but that, that isn't, that's not the one. The same one. That's another one. 
So how did your dad get that name? Well, his, his father's name was, uh, okay. my father, uh, who, my grandfather, that's King Tuff. Okay. That means left-handed, Southpaw. Southpaw, <laughs> okay. <laughs> what does your Native American name mean? Uh, oh, I didn't keep my well. I was sort of a light and thick water just between the dark and dark and black is between so the light and black and gray or brown light brown. How do people how do Indians get those names? Who who gives you your your Indian name? Or who I gave you I your my grand grand my grandmother found. I don't know because uh, I used to have a warrior name, but I didn't get the warrior my name. My warrior name that time. Well, that's why I was going to ask you next, because the information I've read about you said that your name was Warrior Who Walked Up to His Enemy. Yeah, that's... Uh, I, have you done away I, with that one? Uh, I got that name uh, after the war. You know, after, after the war? Yeah, when I had... They had uh, what do you call it? I'm going to explore that because I had to explore that. I had to have the name. One of the villagers gave you that name. Okay, okay. But the first one had to do with the color of your skin. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they were must reaching pretty hard to come up with that that morning or <laughs> that day. <laughs> um, so then you went to Santa Fe Indian School, worked with Dorothy Dunn. What did she think of your work? Well, so she, uh, well, I, I had different style of work. I ended the uh, different work I used to paint oil. With oils? Yeah, oil and uh, not in any way, you know, different, not traditional, I don't know. Oh, well, he started, I see, you know, a lot of spirit, a lot of his travel in and for uh, doing the traditional style. So I started doing that. But you were doing something different before? Oh, uh, yeah. I did what were you I doing before? Well, I did some oil painting. Did you like uh, yeah, landscapes? or you know, just landscapes. And just, uh, Do you I have any of those? Do you no, know no, where they no, are? No. <laughs> I don't want to call it. What do you like painting. to work the best in? Well, acrylic. I mean, it's Things. The acrylics. All I, uh, Are you doing a lot of painting now? Yes, I do. So. And selling it where? Yes, well, any place. Have any in the trunk of your car? Yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's say we have one, two, three, four. We want to see how many people we can sell here. Uh, <clears throat> After you left the Indian school, what happened? Oh no, I don't want to leave the Indian school yet. Did you work on any of the murals at the Indian school? Yes. In the cafeteria? Yeah, yeah, in cafeteria. How about in the classroom? There's a, a border around one of the classrooms that has scenes from from the res and, and some of the Pueblos. No, no, not in the classroom. Oh. But you did work in the That's in the dining room. Dining room. Yeah. Do you know where which one in the dining room? Uh, um, dining room. I, yeah, there, but there's a lot of different ones in there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's there or not. Yeah. yeah. Did you work on the project at Maisel's that Olive Rush? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, yes, I made the uh, dance. Yeah, we're still there. On the front? In right the on the front. Wonderful. We're still there. Still yes, there. yes. Now, Narcisco Beta did that one, yeah, uh -huh. and Pablita. Pablita. Well, Pop didn't, Pop, Shelley didn't do one, I don't think, did she? I don't remember. You know, maybe she doesn't. No, I think uh, Pablita may have been the only female. Uh, I don't remember who did it, though. I forgot. Um, now, that wasn't, that was something that was done for Maisel's and they paid for it. It wasn't a government thing. But do you know how you got selected to do that? Did Oliver or did Mrs. D uh, Dorothea Dunn, did she pick you to do help with the others? 
Yeah. Or did you have to apply to do it? I mean, did you have to well, say, yeah, I want to do it? Or she said, you go do it. Well, it was to do something with the artist from, from around there, from, from student and some other professional artists around them. I forgot another name. I don't know if I don't know. I think I, yeah, I need. I should have looked to see because I've got the list of all of them. <laughs> I remember Narcissus Cabeda and Pablito Velarde. Do you remember some of the others who did that? I mean, I can remember some of the scenes, but had you ever worked? You know, I thought that was a fresco, but it's not fresco. It's. But had you ever worked in the? Is it like? Did you paint on the stucco? Or did you paint? Was it wet or was it dry when you painted it? No. It was dry. It was dry. Okay. I think we used, uh, we, didn't, I didn't, we didn't use acrylic, but we used, uh, uh, what's the name of that thing? Uh, what, casein? Casein. Casein. casein, casein, casein? Yeah. Is, did you put a varnish over it? No, 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 no varnish. It's amazing. It's in still such good shape. Casein is good, but it's, uh, it'll dry. It'll dry. When it dries, it doesn't feel like cement. It doesn't good. come up. Oh, good. It's like acrylic, too. It's the same way, too. Well, we hope that they never let those things get destroyed. That's mm -hmm. because they are all so beautiful. They really are. Um, but I've never had the chance to, I don't know why I didn't talk to Pablito. You're the first one that told me how you did it. How long did it take? Do you remember? Did you do both about, uh, both no. sides or just the one side? About a week or a little, about a couple of weeks, I think. A couple of yeah. weeks. Okay. That's how long it took me. The rest of them are small. I think they didn't take the young green off. Yeah. Do you remember being involved or employed by this federal program, it was, I think the money, most people refer to it as the WPA, the Work Projects Administration, but that was one pot of money. I think they took some more money and put it over here at the BIA, and then, so if you got employed, you were probably employed through the BIA. Do you remember at all? No, I've never been employed by it. I've never been, but, uh, Let's see, uh, Anderson, I think he, he, he went to, I think he painted some, he lived in Washington, I think, some place. He well, the park, and I also on the Winter Rock, uh, Winter Rock, Winter Rock, Winter Rock, or the Winter Rock. Senate Jr., did you say, or you did? Uh, Anderson, did you tell me? Okay. Well, I know that in Washington, Naylor, Gerald Naylor, mm -hmm. Hauser, Herrera, mm -hmm. and Woody Crumbo did some beautiful murals in the Department of Interior. Yes, uh -huh. Those are, and they have been restored. The Hauser ones were in really bad shape, but they've oh. been fixed up now, and they're in good shape. Do you remember doing any other murals anywhere? According to what I read, that you did some when you were in the Army. No, no, no. Well, uh, I don't think uh, no, I never did any other mail except sign painting. I used to uh, make some sign painting. Uh, I did there outside. Some sign <laughs> painting, okay. Was that uh, to to stay alive, to eat? Yeah, I said, uh, there's one in the center piece, still there yet. Where? Where? Uh, just across the Indian School. Across from the Indian School? Yes, sir. Right, that's mine, I suspect. Um, can we... Well, also. Tell me about um, other places that you have painted things. Or, or the paintings that you've done. Like, there's a painting that... Or maybe two paintings in the Gallup Library. But... I, you know Octavia Fellin? Octavia Fellin, the lady who was the librarian in Gallup for many, many years. She's retired now. There's one painting that she says is done by you. And there's another one that she thinks is, she's not sure whether it's by you or by Timothy Begay. 
Do you know? Yeah. You don't know which one. I mean, um, we have, I would really like to know. So sometime when you're in Gallup, I would really appreciate if you'd go over and Octavia is not there anymore, but the lady's name is Mary. Mm -hmm. And if you could look at those paintings and see if you remember which one. Mm -hmm. One of them has your name on it. The other one does not. And that's what we were wondering if it was yours or not. Well, there's some, some famous one in different banks, but they were, they were bought from some The different. banks, yeah. yeah but they were, I didn't, I didn't buy it from either that good, but they, they bought it some other place. Now, in something I read, it indicated that you had an exhibition of paintings in Japan. Yes, oh yes, yes. What, yes. how did that come about? Uh, Oh, the reason I, we had uh, one Japanese school that went to school over there at the uh, NPC over there. Well, the next college, but over here at the, uh, uh, or Sandy, Sandy. At Sandy? Over there, uh, so it's in Lita, the Navajo okay. College. Okay, okay. The Navajo the College. There, okay. Three. She said one day we got a point, she, she took us to Japan, you know. We took some, and there were a lot of Japanese that used to come and visit over here, you know, so. We had make sure a lot of Japanese people, so. Yeah, they're the one that, uh, and I still have my exhibit with it. Not only, uh, uh, not only my painting, but uh, even some silver work that was sold, you know. Silver work. Okay. Like it. So yeah, you like do it. other things too. Tell me about that. Well, I was the only thing I was a silversmith. Do you still do silver work? No, no. My father was a silversmith. I used to do something. That's what I learned when I was a kid. Just a kid, but you're not doing it anymore. <laughs> no. Catalita is not doing much anymore because of her eyesight. Do you have that problem too? She's no, no, no. I did good. have uh, almost with, uh, I went to the hospital and they got. Oh, you had cataracts and. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Too. Cleared it see, up? Yeah, almost. I couldn't see it's all covered. They took it up, so. Good, good. So you're able to paint again? Yes, sir. Okay. Tell me about your family. You married and have children? No, no. I, I was married way back when I uh, died a long time. Did you have any children? No, I no not. children. Okay, all righty. And where do you live now? Well, I, uh, I'm with my uh, my sister's place over there at the Green Hill Bishop. And you have a niece that has been very helpful to me in finding you. Mm -hmm. What is your uh, nephew and niece's name? Uh, <laughs> what are your names? So you have other family that you oh, yeah. that are with you. Good. Got grand. My sister a lot of grandkids. Grandmother, great grandmother, and so forth. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my. Well, now, when you paint, you're still painting. You said, where do you like to do this? Well, I like to do it at home all day. Do you have a place where you can yeah, paint? I got a picture. You have a room where you can do yeah, painting? Yeah, I do. Are you painting scenes that you remember things, or are you painting scenes that you see? Um, well, I don't uh, exactly. I, uh, I had to listen well. Ah, uh, the painting is mostly uh, Navajo, about Navajo Indian, uh, Navajo ceremonial. Okay. Um, everyday life, animals around there, or some kind of location, all around, sand painting, things that all around those things. Oh, I guess it's, it's my day. I have a book that I found called A Hogan for the Bluebird by Anne Kroll and illustrated by Harrison Begay. Yes, 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 yes. 
Did you do a lot of these? And how, tell me how you got into this. I, I think that's the only one I illustrated. This is I the only some. one? Well, I illustrated some, but not, not the whole book. Well, I've been, uh, a lot of people want me to illustrate it, but I never did. I just, do you remember how you got into doing that one? Well, she had to, she had to go to my place and uh, get me over there at home. He took me down to two stones and I stayed there and finished it. <laughs> it was crazy. How long uh, did it take you? Ah, uh, it didn't take me too long, about a couple of weeks, I think. Yeah, it is. It is, it is. Do you remember when that was? I don't remember, but about 20 years ago. You think so? Let's look on the front. I found this and was got all excited. And I want you to sign it for me. 1969. So that's a little more than 40. 20 years. It's closer to 40. How time does fly. 40 years ago. Yeah. Well, let's see. 69. 30. 30, 31, 31 years. So. 31 years. Yes. Uh, yes. Well, I guess it was years ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I only guessed it. I what do you. Go too Yes, I've noticed that. And the whiter my hair gets, the faster it goes. How come your hair isn't as white as mine? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I don't know. Well, a lot of, a lot of people, they, got, they get it white hair when, when, when they're only 30 years old. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My husband started getting his when he was 16, so. Um, I would like to ask Sally if she has any questions she would like to ask you. She uh, sees your art from time to time. Maybe you have some questions. You mainly answered them already on one sparse, the subjects that you paint, so. <laughs> what of the, is, in the book that I've, the things I've read about you, you've won lots of awards. What kind or what award if you remember what one gave you the greatest pleasure what were you the proudest of well the French government gave me an award I forgot the name what they call I forgot the name but they told the outstanding achievement and someday they came to they uh they came to love for uh, Indian arts I think El Harder got one and I got one and uh, uh, not only in painting, but other, other achievement. Uh, uh, from San what's that name? Uh, uh, the pottery? Maria. Maria Martinez. Maria, she got it too. Okay. And so I don't know, I don't remember who the others were. But, uh, maybe Andy got it too. Yeah. Do you remember what, but you don't remember? What the group was that gave it to you? I think I, was, I think it was the name Pompey Academy, the French one. Oh, the French government. The no, French government. Yes, right. Oh yes. Yeah. Oh, I can find out then exactly what yeah. it was. Or do yeah. you know Faye? Pompey Academy. Yeah. I had to read up and see it. I didn't stop it. I don't know where they went to. Oh, the the paper is still got it over there. You know, there's no way to get it back. The paper. He has a lot of paintings at Northern Arizona. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I've got some over there. Okay. Okay. Do you, going back to this New Deal period, this time, thir 1933 to 43, so mm -hmm. you would have been early or late teenager, 20s, whatever. And like before you went into the military, mm -hmm. do you remember doing any paintings and then they were sent off somewhere and you don't know where? No, no, I, uh, I didn't do much painting that time. Well, somehow or other you did one at least that got in or maybe two in the Gallup Library because mm -hmm. uh, they do have them. But were you painting and selling things then too? No, no. I just, I did a little painting work. I just did get the uh, Indian, Indian trader that the, Okay. That, that was some, some kind of a pencil. 
What mm -hmm. did you get for the first painting you sold? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I gave away three of them. Uh, but made you feel like maybe you really were an artist when you sold that one mm -hmm. or whatever it was? I remember the only time I uh, sold, I remember it from here in Sunday University. Uh, a lady by the name of Mr. Dietrich. Remember her? I don't know. I've heard the name in the records that I've been reading. Okay. So this is Dietrich. She had a lot of collection now, uh, but when she died, she, she came to work at some museum, I think, on her end. She, she could have a lot of Indian paintings. Well, there's two or three Indian museums in Santa Fe that have some wonderful collections. Mm -hmm. Do you know if there are any of your paintings in, say, the Wheelwright Museum or the mm -hmm. uh, Indian Museum? Are there? Well, the Wheelwright area, they had a lot more paintings. I used to paint over there, but they had the museum over there, so they, but uh, there's no more over there. So they sent all of the Indian paintings, all of them open. He sent it to uh, Neighborhood College in the, in the reservation. They're all there now. Okay. All the big sand paintings. Okay, in, at the Nav Navajo College in... Yeah, they call it the Navajo College. College. Saley? And yeah. Saley. Yeah. Saley, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, what do you want to be when you grow up, Harrison Begay? <laughs> when I was little boy, I was going to be an aviator, but I didn't make it. What did you do in the Army when you were World War II? I was in the Signal Corps. So. You were in the Signal Corps. I got, the wrong, I got in the wrong Signal Corps. <clears throat> I should have come to the Marine. I, <laughs> I didn't know. I, I was in the Army. Well, were you... You didn't get involved with the Code Talkers then? Right? No, 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 I didn't do that. Because I've talked to a lot of the Code Talkers, and that was a pretty special thing. Mm -hmm. uh, were a lot of any of your friends in the Code Talkers? Oh, yeah. Because they all came from the same part of the country. Sure, sure, sure. I loved it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I loved it when they said they had to, finally had to send, make sure that two people went out with them because... They, if they got one, they sometimes took them and made them as, as uh, uh, prisoners because they thought they were Japanese because they looked so much like the Japanese. Yeah, which like is, from here, I know that all those boys that were caught over there could work it down too. Oh, yeah. They were, they were from the wow. from here. San Pedro's guy used to school, not They were in the National Guard, you know, they were. They just went with the water, they just took a national guard over that for Right. And with, they got a cop. And very poor at machines, I mean, with guns, and didn't have the right kind of ammunition. It was a mess. Mm -hmm. And certainly a lot of men got killed. Mm -hmm. That was terrible. But I certainly admire all those. There's still some that are still alive and, uh, and in Santa Fe. But you were not part of that. I don't know. You lucked out, right? <laughs> well, tell us something else about your life that's important to you. I don't know. Well, I don't know. When I was a kid, I got, I got sick. I got two weeks. I've been in the hospital. It's been about three years over there. And I just took off of my ran out. I ran away from the hospital, so I stayed at home for those three years. I didn't go to school for that. I was away from school for six years. Really? When I came back when I was 20 years old, <laughs> I went back to school. Caught it all up. Yeah. You've been running away then for a long time, right? <laughs> yeah. I have a friend who's a rancher up, in, uh, yeah. up by Oklahoma. And his family started locking up his saddle when he was eight because he kept running off. And they had to lock up his saddle. He yeah. still runs off. Yeah. And his wife can't lock up his yeah. pickup. <laughs> well, tell us anything else you want to share. Anything else that Sally can think of? 
Faye, if you all have anything you want to share with us that you think we need to know. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of the stuff that he had done Can you back in the it? 60s. Uh, he had kind of gotten away from it. And uh, the stuff that he done was uh, traditional uh, squad dances and uh, game chains and as a group and as individuals standing uh, he even chased he's done that and uh, a lot of that stuff's been uh, sold to uh, in Gallup to uh, metal uh, the person over there that has been so helpful is the fellow, but I can't think of his name, the fellow who runs Zia, or Kiva Gallery. Yeah, yes, Kiva. He's the, yeah. one, he's the one that has quite a few of them uh, that were in, in the early stages. Great. And then after that, he uh, done a lot of it, and he transferred most of it down into two, uh, Scottsdale and Phoenix area. And then the last few years, he's got uh, quite a few of them that he sold into Flagstaff and, and Museum. And uh, Pokey Park Gallery there, Flagstaff. Okay. And uh, nowadays, he makes a one or two that he takes over there and mainly it's uh, uh, sheep herders or uh, livestock and stuff like that. Okay. And uh, he says, well, he claims that the, all the Yavi shades and the squad has are taking a little bit longer than necessary. He had lost his uh, eyesight at one time and it took him to uh, to the city, and they had to replace the limb portion of it. So now he can see pretty good with it again. Good. So he's good. back into it. A little bit of it. Good. The thing that we have found is that every time we do these interviews, as soon as we turn off the camera, then the individual starts telling us stories that we wished we had gotten on the camera. So I. I wanted to make sure today, since it's taken us two years, that uh, if any of us can think of anything that we should share about, we'd like to, we'd like to have it. Right, and uh, some of the students that he had uh, was were uh, Jerry Lee and Is it hard to teach others how to paint? Well, yeah, it's, it's a little hard. It's like in these days, but I was going to teach you some of that. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it either. I don't like it either. I just keep a little glass at all. What did. What did Dorothy Dunn do to teach you all? How did she teach you? Or did she just let you do it? Oh, hey. she let us do it. She, she let, let you do figure, it? Yeah, to, to do uh, in and with. Now, there has been some argument or discussion about the fact that uh, she wouldn't let you do other things, or you just did certain things. What do you remember any problems at the time, or she just she didn't force you to do something, but you just did whatever you wanted to do? Uh, uh, well, she didn't force us, she, she knows what the way we did our own you, and she didn't have a way, but because we know what we can, we can do. Mm -hmm. Uh, she appreciated what we're doing. Sometimes we, we get a kid at what we do. So. <laughs> <laughs> she enjoyed it. Huh? Yeah, she enjoyed it, you know. Did, yeah. uh, did any of you... Use our own mind, you know, this is kind of... 
all the people. How did she relate to you all? I mean, she didn't know anything about Indian life, did she? I mean, how did she appreciate what you all were sharing with her? Do you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Did you like her? Yes, yes. Woman, uh, well, she woman. How did she went to Chicago? What did this way keep her? She was with my blue man or nothing. I but don't she remember. Went to Chicago school, art school, art, school, yeah. art institute, or whatever. Okay. Yes, yeah, art institute. Yeah. Mr. Begay, a hundred years from now, when people are looking at your artwork, particularly Native American children, what would you like them to know about you and your artwork when they look at it that far in the future? I didn't get you. I didn't get the, yeah, I didn't get the, When people look at your artwork a hundred years from now, in the future, after you're gone, yeah. what would you like them to know about you and your artwork? Well, I don't know. Well, I don't That's know. a toughie. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to, uh, uh, I guess, uh, <clears throat> there are something, yeah, I mean, something like traditional in and out, they probably know something about it. Do you feel that what you've tried to do is record things the way you remember them in your life and how things I mean the the Native American kids today are not growing up the way you grew up or I grew up none of our kids are growing up the same way so what you've recorded will be very helpful in it and it's done so beautifully did you you said you wanted to be an aviator. Why did you end up a painter? Uh, because I like it as well. I like to do that. Uh, I, uh, I did pretty good that I uh, did a lot of and I saw I can lose money from painting right away than, than any other things. I learned other things like I used to. I learned how to house painting. I used to know how to weld. You know, Welding? I welded things like the iron work. I used to do that. Also, wood carving, leather work. Oh, I like painting too, especially. I like painting good, so I started painting. And I was like, oh, I was making some money paying so I started doing that. Eliseo Rodriguez in, in Santa Fe said that he ended up learning how to do the, the inlaid applique straw, this tiny little detail work, which he learned how to do during the WPA. But he said, you know, the thing was that I was willing to try any kind of art. He said, mm -hmm. I love to do any kind of art. I just mm -hmm. love art. Mm -hmm. And I found an oil painting that he did back in the 30s that he hadn't seen in a long time. It's in a school in Dexter. Mm -hmm. And none of his kids could believe that he did that kind of painting because <laughs> they thought he only did yeah. something. He said, oh, I did all kinds of painting, mm -hmm. all kinds of art. Do you feel like you tried a lot? Different things? Yes, I tried a lot of different things. But you like painting watercolors mm -hmm. best? Yes. Yeah. Yes. What's what's good about the watercolor? What makes you feel good about when you do that kind as opposed to oils? Or you said you're doing acrylics. Yeah. Well, oh, um, it's cleaner. Um, all paint it takes a lot of work you need to wash a lot of oil and you know and then. But acrylic you don't have to it's clean. Yeah, yeah. 
you know, been trashed right away, you know. It doesn't <laughs> Who has bought most of your pa- Who's bought the most of your paintings? Do you have somebody that really buys a, has over the years bought a lot of your paintings personally, as opposed to the Kiva Gallery owner? Well, the Gallery owner in Fisher I bought a lot of Kiva Gallery. We've been in the museum in Arizona, also in uh, Tucson. But there's no one person that you know that buys a lot of your stuff. No. Steve. Steve. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, in the, in the, <laughs> I will cut the in the flag statue. Okay. Uh, Steve, I think she, yeah, maybe that's. I think Steve. Steve uh, buys. I like it. He has, and uh, I think he has the most though. Oh gosh, yeah. Does he have a gallery or has he got a home? He's got a store. A store, okay. I, I started that business with him, you mean? He didn't have any money to We started, so I helped him out and we started the business. Oh. And he, he built up now. Good. He's a young man, but he's not, he's older now. Okay, yeah, so you helped him out? Yard, you know, but he, he went to school there, he went to school at the university. He went to school, at school over there, the university. Arizona, so we started a little bit. We started a little. Well, let's we wrap started. this up by you telling me something about some of these other guys that you paint with, you went to school with. I always like to ask artists to tell me, because so many of these people I will never be able to interview because they're dead. Mm-hmm. Um, what, was, what were some of these guys like? Do you remember? Like, tell me about Andrew, uh, Andy Sinegeni. Yes, Andy Sinegeni, too. But, uh, uh, I didn't paint with him too much, going, but, uh, but he uh, really ahead of me, so he was we had two years ahead of me. Oh, he was two years ahead. Yeah, yeah, so, um, I don't think I, I don't think he learned with that, though. I don't know, I don't think he. Okay. He, uh, what about uh, Narcisco and Vega? Jerry Naylor, too. Jerry Naylor? I mean, they're older than me, so they. Okay. I don't think they, uh, they learned on their own. They didn't, they didn't uh, I got taught by. Uh, they didn't learn, they didn't, they didn't, uh, uh, they learned uh, some more. They learned painting from other, from other fishermen. Okay. Uh, what about mm-hmm. Narcisco Abeta? Did you know him yeah, well? He, uh, yeah, he. Because you all were both from Gallup area, right? Yeah, yeah, he, uh, yeah he started painting. He, he learned how to paint over there. Uh. Certainly has had a, some sadness in his family. Yeah. That's been sad. His death, his daughter's death, whatnot. But his son Tony is doing well, I guess. But he was a friend. Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to share? Oh, yeah, I saw the fly. I've seen the stuff she ever cut off. <laughs> yeah, well, let's, let's talk about something else and then we'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, some of the stuff that uh, he had done with uh, other students that uh, might have learned something, they lived with him for six months or so um, just watching him paint and they would get into it and they would paint alongside him when was them. this how how long ago uh, how, how to do it and then uh with the acrylic portion of it he's got painting that he has real fine line really and those things are real fine and with acrylic with the acrylic wow and uh, that's what set him aside. And then uh, with her kids, uh, two of them picked it up. And one of them uh, is, is trying to, to do oil painting. And then the other one has a real fine pencil sketching. Mm. So, and then there are a few other people around the country that 
they have seen him work and he's uh his influence on them carried on to them and they're they're doing all right good good and, uh, he when he when he does leave here this will find world he's going to leave the mark behind him a fine mark a fine mark and uh, a lot of the old traders that he had uh, sold him stuff to a lot of them are in storage and quite a few of them have been shipped overseas to Japan, French, and places like that, Spain. Wow. Um, he, he never, most of his pain never stayed in the U.S. very long. <laughs> so you're just an international figure. Did you enjoy going to Japan? Yes, ma'am. Did you find it very different? Yes. <laughs> where did it be? I was going to ask you. Where were you stationed in World War Two? Huh? Where were you stationed in World War Two? Well, I was in Iceland. In Iceland? <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> did you paint in Iceland? Oh, no, no, I didn't paint. I was a telephone man. <clears throat> You were just doing your signaling, huh? Yeah, just uh, take care of me in kitchen, is it? Yeah, yeah. Well, just for, uh, I want to hear this for me, the eat day, so I had to. I had no degrees, too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't go to Paris last night, went to Paris. Really? I was just kind of saying, look, saying, look, big soon. I was in the hospital. In England. I wish I had been to Paris, I let it go. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. I interviewed one man, his name is John Jellico. He was from up around Raton. And mm -hmm. during the time he was in the army in World War II, he was set up to do a painting, a portrait of Eisenhower. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember where he was, but it was really a hot place. Mm -hmm. And uh unannounced in came the general eisenhower and some other people to to see this portrait and he was just walking around in his shorts because it was so hot and he said i jumped to attention and and felt so silly because i was <laughs> totally out of uniform and here were all these big cheese guys in here so he felt like he was in trouble but they liked the painting so he got okay <laughs> Anything else you want to share? Shall we wrap this up? Um, Say? There's something I'd like to mention that he left his art, you know, he wore it from sun up to midnight. Was, you had some art. Could you bring it? Yeah. Some of his work? Let's put it on camera. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so you work, you work morning to night, huh? At midnight. At midnight. At midnight. <laughs> nothing was, nothing was That's what I remember. I had to take care of my eyes. I don't work the way I used to do. I used to work the way I was on my eyes, but I don't do that anymore. Oh, oh, how beautiful. Oh, oh, I love this one. Tell me about these. Well, this was uh, the everyday life painting. Yeah, this was fun. Mm. Same morning, she saw. Ah, so I have the. They need rings, so. This is, you know, the ring will come back. They have a good ring for it. And we put rings, uh, second day. The ring for the whole scene, she's uh, listening to the whole ring for the whole thing. Another separate, separate group. He's happy, so I go to have some water, a lot of grass after rain. Green grass. That's what we had uh, <laughs> summer, we didn't have it. <laughs> a long time. <laughs> yeah, right. I was even surprised when it rained this morning. <laughs> and this one, we have some uh, some green grass in it, too. Yeah, I did this, did a lot of fish, you know, that I was uh, just every day, like Mr. Boy. I'd bring him with his. Uh, Young, young pony and puppy. Did you have a puppy and a pony? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was your horse's name? <laughs> I 
Is that a puppy's? Lots of them. Yeah, really. Yeah. Are the cats too? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lots of cats. Um, what is this done in watercolor? Uh, that's done in acrylic. Acrylic. This is the acrylic. Yes. Sir. Okay, that's what I thought, but I wanted to make sure. Mm -hmm. How you must use an awfully tiny brush, mm -hmm. very fine brush. Yes, I do. And you must feel pretty blessed to have lost your eyesight and then get to have it come back and still get to work. Right. Wonderful. Thank you very much for being with us and sharing these. These are so beautiful. Well, these are nice people to share. Um, uh, I don't know how you call this. made from uh, uh, cloth, you know. Made from cloth? Yeah, from cloth. But well, these are made from timber. Yes. Right. All right. Thank you. We are finishing this up, and it's September the 8th, 2000. We're in the Albuquerque Museum Auditorium with Harrison Begay, and my name is Kathy Flynn, and Sally Bowler Hill has done the videotaping. We want to thank you very much for being with us today. Uh, and uh, I want to know if you want to sell these. <laughs> <laughs>